I mean, I'm telling you, of course. But we have to constantly be in a boat here. Yes, the Holy Spirit highlights that sin to go, hello, the guilt begins, the shame, and then show you how to repent, that what? To fix it. To fix it. Amen? And if, as you start to grow, you will learn to walk in righteousness, meaning let Jesus make the decision. Not, and not this nonsense I hear, what will Jesus do? No, that's you. Hmm. You want to do what you think Jesus will do. No. You, it should be stated this way. Let Jesus do what Jesus do in your life. Not what will Jesus do. If you want to know what Jesus will do, just wait. Just witness. Just ask him. I don't care what the situation can't put us the Lord, subside my will, so thy will can be done. And you will see what Jesus do. Why do you need to guess? Mm -hmm. The reason you're asking the question, you're planning to usurp Jesus. Exactly. Mm -hmm. you're, you're literally saying, well, since Jesus isn't here, what would I do in his place? <laughs> That's what you're... You're doing Saul. That's what Saul did to Samuel. Samuel is not here, so what will Samuel do? Exactly. <laughs> God did not please with Saul. You're God took away the kingdom because of that. You're literally saying, I'm going to guess what Jesus is yes. doing. Usually laced with a little bit of selfishness. Yeah. You, you don't need to do that. He's right there. So Jesus, do what you're supposed to do. They should really change it. This situation. Okay, Jesus, you do what you're supposed to do. Perfect. That's his job. But do not. You know, I heard this thing on the message. God hasn't finished writing your life. Stop, stop trying to steal the pen. Mm-hmm. You know, or God is still writing your life out. Stop trying to steal the pen. He's already done his work. We are forever trying to usurp what Jesus should be doing. A, simple, a long time ago, as God said a saint to me, I guess I was a master at stealing his pen. This is a long time ago, but two decades. And the saint came and gave me some simple words. When you have to deal with anyone, I don't care what it is, your wife, your children, a person in your car, I want you to say this. Soon as it's happening. Oh Lord, subside my will so thy will can be done. This is the only thing God wants you to do. Get out of what? The way. way. He wants you to stop reacting. Your reaction is this. Ask him to what? React. As we read it, we read it in Revelation 3, 18, Jesus got, I implore you to buy for me. Let me do it for you. You don't know what you're doing. And on top, you don't know what you're doing. Your sin that is before you, you're not even conscious of it. <laughs> so you can't even ask for repentance. You know, sometimes that is just sin. Like God works in ways where he's telling you, I'm always working. Yeah. I'm always working, but with but, but busyness, and you're thinking, oh, that passed by. Um, this, uh, for instance, like this week here, since last week, like, call this person. I'm going... You know what? She's going to think if I call, I'm not going to call her. But I know it. She's, gonna, she's thinking that she's the one who's always have to make the call. Then I have this other impression say, get this package for her. Another thing saying, I can't get to her. Self is telling me, I can't get to her. I don't drive. She's too far. A week and a half later, I got that phone call from her. And I said, I'll be truthful to with you. I thought about calling. And then I says, no, I'm not going to call. And then I thought to myself, she's gonna, if she calls, she's going to say to herself, she's the one who's always had to make the phone call. The same thing about getting the stuff to her, yeah. she asked me for. Of course. Well, we, we like to rebel and we justify rebellion. You do what most do. One part is rebel and then we justify the rebellion. Or we disobey, we disobey the prompting of the Holy Spirit. And, and like I said, and then we justify it. Well, she'll think of, you know, we, have a, we have this nice story to maintain and to sustain our rebellion. You know, and our disobedience. But it's still rebellion and disobedience. And, mm -hmm. and, and unfortunately, we're not moving in the right spirit. We're still doing the way of Cain. We're still not doing what is acceptable before the Lord. Yes. I, th I told you a couple weeks ago the Lord rebuked me on this matter. The Lord told me, I never, I never disobeyed not doing it, but my timeline was very wrong. Until the Lord said, do you like the, the delaying your blessing? You, you're not telling me you're not going to do it, but you ain't doing it. <laughs> You've been planning for like a month. Yeah. I just didn't find why I wasn't doing it. I no. wasn't going to get there. Yeah, yeah. I didn't justify but I just wanted to get it done. <laughs> You know, and, and, and you need to get it. That's also sin. It needs to get what? Done. Done. I was kind of like I said, that person need it or mama might need it. I can't go, well, when I get to it, if the Lord bring it to you, what? Do you it. need to get it done. He's almost speaking. Well, it, it, it's, it's what you said. 
It's, it's a faith issue. It's not a reasoning issue. We reason and then we abandon our faith. We, we make up reasons. Yeah, like, the reason. well, it, the faith is, did the Lord tell me to do it? Yes or no? That's it. There's no reason. There's no reasoning. Yep. But we go like, well, they, they, maybe they'll need it later. Or that wasn't really the Lord. Or, you know, like, that's not the issue. The yep. issue is a faith issue. Yes. Did he say it? Yes or no? That is the But in the Lord, let's wrap this process up. Where are we? We are in Psalm 51. The Lord, first 10. Yep. Create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a right. Amen. Right. Preserve it. And step faster. No, I love them. They say, don't just renew the spirit. I want it to stay. I want, I want the spirit preserved. And I want it to stay in that state all the time. Amen? Cast me not. This is the same way that came. Cast me not away from your presence. From your face. Amen? And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Because the Holy Spirit is taken away. One, you can't lead into truth. And you have nothing like, oh, if they didn't have the law, you have nothing to evaluate what you're doing. You have no way to tell when you're in the wrong state. Amen? When you cut somebody off on the road, when you're rude to your wife, your friends, your children, you have nothing to measure. Mm. So David, don't, like it, don't take, take me away from your present and do not take the spirit that relates what? To your present. Amen? He went on to say, Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Amen? And uphold me with a willing spirit. You see, when you're operating right, the Spirit is in so much joy, and the Lord's Spirit is holding you in consistency. In Jesus' name. You see, when you catch this trick, you will start to really love communion, or what Mama called, I love that word, reset. Uh, by the grace of God, God and His mercy in my own life, I can always tell when I'm about to slip through God's mercy, or most of the time, that could be just Jackie call me to go, how is your day? And I'm going to go to a 10, but I'm going to sin one way or the other. And like, you know, they said St. Francis was working, working, and he couldn't sense the presence of the Lord, and he ran back to his cave. Some of us, when we're dealing, we have busy life, but you cannot tell when you're no longer on track. Perfect, yeah. Or when you're beginning to move away from the, from the pattern you should be on. So because of this, you don't run to your little room or run in the washroom and pray or thank God. You, you can, you don't even, you're not even sure what the state is. Yeah. So how can you tell when you're losing it? Hmm. You, do you understand? Yeah. And unfortunately, you, you, you know, I heard my wife praying this morning. We, we, instead of giving God glory, we are bringing shame. And instead of blessing people, we are the blessing children. We are participating in the curse. Yeah. And it's simply because your state was changing and you didn't even what, realize it. You know, and, and then there's that, there's the obvious state of being aware and, and, you know, not being aware. And then there's that in-between state where your, your awareness is in the background telling you something. And you're like, you're aware of that awareness, but you're like, I didn't do it. But I, I was aware of it. You, you know what I mean? You're beginning, to shift. Yeah. you're beginning to shift from one place to the next. Yeah. But you're not making the adjustment necessary. Yeah, those are the worst because if you don't listen to it, like it or not, you're going to get that effect. Yeah. You know, like, you're always getting effects whether you like it. One way or the other. Yeah. First Turkey said, Then will I teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall be converted and returned to you. Most of us can't, can't turn back anybody that's sinning. Why? Mm. We are chief among them. You can never say, convert anybody or tell anybody stop doing that because you are king of it. If I am cussing any, by any, any people at will, how can I tell mama stop cussing? Because you don't know good. I was all you know. It's like there's the emergency exit and there's a fire and you're just sitting there going, that's the exit, that's the exit, but you're still sitting in the fire. Why is anybody going to believe you? <laughs> we, we, we have to make sure our spirits stay aright so we can help people that spirit is not aright get on right. And help people get converted from the dysfunctional, the cursed state, into the blessed state, or from the unacceptable state to the acceptable state. But you have to walk perpetually in that place. Now you can't do this on your own. That the Lord said you, you, you need to buy from you, you need to ask Him a lot to get the grace necessary to live before Him in an acceptable way, and to live with people in an acceptable way, and to go in and out with people, things, and situations in an acceptable way. Amen? So our life can benefit somebody in Jesus' name. 
Deliver me from blood guilt, guiltiness and death, O Lord, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud your righteousness, your rightness, and your justice. Lord, O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth your praise. Hallelujah. For you delight not in sacrifice, or else would I give it. You find no pleasure in born offering. God is far more concerned in their right state than any sacrifice. Lord, I did this for you. You want to walk in, in a perpetual state, I would like. Yeah. What about walking in the, in the, the, the character without flaw? My sacrifice, the sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, broken down with sorrow for sin, and humbly and thoroughly penance. Amen? Such, O oh God, you will not despise. God wants you more in a humble state. This is the sacrifice. Lord, I can't help myself from sinning, and without you I can't stay out of sinning. Only through you I can walk and live acceptable. That humble side, and I don't think for broken, when it's not broken, we got this person to become humble. Mm -hmm. They don't try to deal with people, things, or situations, or live before God on their own. They live by faith, where God provides all the equipped in Jesus to live before Him and to deal with people. Amen? It's not how hard you work. It's not even how much you read your Bible, or how much money you give. Do you have the humility to stand before God and say, God, I cannot live acceptable before you in my family dealing with people on the road without you? Do you have the humility to use your faith? When we humble enough, then we use what? Our faith. In Jesus' name. Do good in your good pleasure to Zion. Rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. Then will you delight in the sanctuary in the sacrifice of righteousness, justice, and right, with born offering, the whole born offering, then Bullock will be offered upon the altar. Mm -hmm. This is a wonderful process of awareness and confession. You see, awareness and confession, awareness and confession. This whole message is called, amen, awareness, self-awareness and confession. confession. You need to... Get the Lord to enlighten your awareness. Make you more aware of all your being before Him. People, things, and situations. And God has equipped us with the Holy Spirit just like He had equipped. Amen? The whole, the, the Israelite um, community with the law. And the purpose of that was to make them aware. Amen? To train their awareness and their consciousness which can lead to repentance, faith, and holy character. We are the same thing except we have a different tool. We have the Holy Spirit that should, that should be constantly enlightening you, amen, of how you're being, what you're believing, what you're thinking, what you're saying. And there's no if you're going to mess up. You will sometimes. This is part of the training process. But this should lead you to repentance and lead you to an increased dependence on Jesus, more faith. Every time you mess up, should tell you you need to what? Use more faith. Mm. Which should then refine your character what? More. More. Every time we use faith or character, get it's like something. Um, you know, like when you when you we how they, how they cut a CD or the, the computer mark a CD, it makes the groove deeper. You see, every mistake you make should be an opportunity to repent, to increase your faith. To what Jesus can pour forth or forge the character that is already objective, more subjective in your being. But. Me, I think, I think many of us, we miss such wonderful opportunity to grow because we are so unaware. You have to get to the, if you want your spiritual life to really start moving forward, you need to ask the Lord to, Father, increase my awareness or make me aware of all I'm interplaying with you and people. I grow from my kids, I grow from the people at work, I grow from the people I drive with, I grow from my wife, I grow just about anyone. Because they give me a chance to see how I want, how I behave. They give you a chance to see you. Yes. True. That is so true. Through the light okay. that God provides, I get a chance to watch how I interplay with people, things, and situations. It's quite easy to think you're quite something when you haven't been what? Tested. Tested. Yeah. Standing in the mirror, you can say, I'm really merciful. I'm so kind. I'm so generous. But nobody's asking you to give your $600 or pay your rent. Yep. Yeah. 
it is quite easy to think you are far better than you are. Mm -hmm. Because you have not been what? Tested. Mm -hmm. But God said, I'm going to try and test you. you go, what you think you are or what I know you are, I'm going to put it to the test. And then you see. Somebody going to mash your feet. Somebody going to hit your car. Just to show you where you truly are. I was walking to the washroom just now. I'm thinking of man can trust me so much. I can call someone up and I say, listen, something just crossed my desk. I need your credit card. No question asked. I'm, 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 I'm going to apply that $3,000. That person trusts me to ask me a question. Yeah. And I'm thinking, God, if, man, if, I, if, if I build that rapport where mankind has trusted me, then how can I not trust you? You're right. I was walking there just and I'm just thinking about that. Yep. A man trusts me, yep. then how can I not trust him? Yeah, I get it. It does show our lack of faith. You know, this is why, you know, uh, if we don't come to the place where we realize, Lord, like David said, I tell you, you need to read back to Sam. David knew himself in this cell. David got, I was conceived in doing things wrong. I am born in what? Doing things wrong. Which make me also susceptible to the, to not just, not just I'm wrong, to the force of wrong. So Lord, if you don't take me, save me, I'll do perpetually what? Oh. Wrong. Many of us don't have this proper mindset. You believe you're quite right. So God is constantly, instead of growing you up, just trying to prove to you that you're very what? Wrong. I accept your perfection. I'm not perfect. You see, you're very wrong. So because of this lack of, of proper um, perspective, it doesn't make us take corrective measure. It doesn't make us try to work on faith. Why would I work on faith if I feel I'm doing what? Quite well. Mm -hmm. Amen? In the name of Jesus. We're going to stop here for today and then bring it into the message of awareness and confession. But we're trusting the Lord benefit those that um, listen to it today and those who are following us on the net and YouTube. We thank God for your life in the name of Jesus. I want to encourage you, the Lord is the best evaluator, the best um, entity that can diagnose us properly and give us the proper corrective measure that we need. So don't be afraid for those of us in the body of Christ. In fact, it's essential that you go to the Lord and ask Him, you know, to sort your heart and sort your mind <laughs> if there's anything evil or wicked or hurtful. And, and as, you, as He starts to show you, remember Revelation 3, 17 through 20. Because he loves you, he will tell you when you're not operating properly in the right spirit or in the right belief or the right thoughts or right words of manifestation. And then you must be obedient and ask him to reset you, as David said. Amen? Renew my spirit. Set it aright so you can be reset to be effective before the Lord and with your fellow man. That you can help other people because you're walking in the right spirit and convert those that are transgressed, that they will want to come to walk properly to experience the blessedness. Mm -hmm. God tell Cain in Genesis chapter 4, if you do what's right, you will be accepted and blessed, but if you do what's wrong, sin is there. It is time, especially we the church, to stop walking in ways that are bringing us negative effect and walk in the way that brings us blessings upon blessings and favor upon favor and grace heaped up upon grace that the Lord was working through us and around us to make sure we walk in those blessings and those favor. When we walk in the grace, we need to use our faith to Jesus do the work for us, not what would Jesus do when we do in it. Then those blessings and favor can flow unchecked and without any hindrance. And anyone who is still walking in the way of Cain unacceptable, we want to invite you right now. Wheresoever you are, if you repeat these three statements, that Jesus is the Son of God, and believe it with your heart, and God raised him from the dead, and he's the Lord, the owner, and the Christ, the Savior of humanity, you shall be saved, move into an acceptable state and right standing with the Lord, and the Holy Spirit shall be given to you to teach you and to walk in the acceptable way through the grace, and you will experience the favor and the blessing of the Lord in your life and your family life. In Jesus' name we say, Amen. Amen.